I'm going to start with the Danish pastry by making the butter layer. And this is a pretty easy step. I've got two sticks of softened or room temperature butter, which I'm going to put into my mixer. Along with that, I'm going to put one third cup of all-purpose flour. And we're just going to mix this up real quick and get it nicely blended. The recipe is pretty easy, right? Everybody gets so afraid of making things like Danish pastry dough and puff pastry. It does take time. It can be a little bit messy, but it's a lot of fun. So get all of our butter off because this is what's going to make the pastry puff up once it hits the oven is those layers of butter. Now I have a piece of wax paper. And I'm going to take all my butter, plop it down, now there's many different um, ways to make Danish pastry that I have read about recently and some of them say you know, cube your butter and mash it in with your hands. And believe me, I've tried a lot of these different methods. And this is by far my favorite. Now, with an offset spatula or a regular knife, but I just find this much easier to work with. We want to make a flat piece of butter that is approximately 12 inches by 6 inches, and you'll see why once we get going with the recipe. And you don't have to be crazy about this. You don't have to get it exactly 12 by 6, but close is good. And you want it pretty even. You don't want like the edges to be really thin because it'll be hard to move around later. And when I make this sort of pastry, one of the things that I use a lot is measuring tape. This is close to 12, a little shy of 6. So bring it up just a little bit. have very close to 12 by 6. I'm going to take another piece of wax paper and cover it up. And this I get a chance to kind of smooth it here. Then I'm going to put it on a cookie sheet and I'm going to put this in the refrigerator until this butter hardens up. That's at least 30 to 45 minutes. So I'll do that and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we make the dough. Now we can start the dough part that now that our butter's in the refrigerator chilling. So I'm going to get a small saucepan and in it I'm going to put one and a quarter cups of whole milk. Uh, you don't want to use like a 1% or a 2% or a skim here, you want the whole milk. I'm going to use like a half a teaspoon of salt and one quarter cup of sugar. And I'm going to mix that up well. And I'm going to put this on the stove for a few minutes. I want this to become warm but not hot. I don't want it to boil. I want it to be like maybe 104 degrees, just slightly higher than body temperature because if it's too warm, it's going to kill our yeast and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to put this on the stove. The stove is already on and heating. And next we're going to, in our mixer bowl, I've got my big bucket of flour here and I'm going to start off with one and one half cups of flour. So there's my half cup and 
my one cup. And to that, I'm going to add two tablespoons of yeast. Now I buy my yeast in bulk. You can buy it in those little packets. If you do, you want two packets. But it's so much less expensive to buy it in bulk if you're going to use it. Just store it in your refrigerator and it'll keep for quite a while. And I'll just give that a little whisk up. Also to this, I'm going to be adding one egg and some vanilla. Now, I make my own vanilla sometimes. And what I do is, this is one of those mason jars that you can buy anywhere with the screw-on lids. And I bought some vanilla beans. In this case, I think I have three of them in here that I cut in half and I split down the middle, put them in the jar, and then I went and I bought some vodka and I filled the jar up with vodka. Now, the unfortunate part is you gotta wait like six months, six, seven months or more until it becomes very good vanilla, but smell is amazing. So now all I have to do is I have to wait until that milk comes up to about 100, 406 degrees before we can proceed. So let me get my milk. There we go, there's our milk. So I will now put in the egg. I'm going to put in two teaspoons of vanilla because I like vanilla flavor. Now, if you don't want to use vanilla, you could put in lemon extract or you could put in almond extract. You could put in some lemon zest in this if you want to, but I like to keep it plain. Truer to the Danish flavors. Add the milk. And now we're going to proceed to our mixer. I'm going to start with the paddle attachment because I want to blend this up very well. So about two to three minutes on the mixer. All right, that's pretty well blended. Just gonna use my paddle, scrape up the bottom, make sure I got everything down there. Now we're going to get rid of the paddle and move on to a dough hook. But I'm going to add another two cups of flour. So I have one and a half in there already. This will make it three and a half. The recipe calls for a total of three and a half to four cups. So I'm gonna go shy on this next cup. It's always better to add it. I would rather have a stickier dough than a hard dough. But once you get a hard dough, it just doesn't work out as well. So now a few minutes on the mixer and we'll see how sticky or how hard it came out. but it's not sticking very much to my hand. So I'm going to take it out, get rid of this for now, and I'm going to knead it a little bit on my table, like a bread dough, but you don't have to knead this very long. Like a bread dough, you might want to knead for 10 minutes or more. Oh, I don't need that. Here we go. Now, I won't put too much on the table, and I'm just going to need it for like two to three minutes. All right, that's been a few minutes, just two to three minutes. You don't, like I said, it's not a bread dough. So. I'm going to put this on our table. I'm going to cover it with a tea towel. And I'll leave it alone for 10 to 15 minutes. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it alone. Let it sit there. Let the gluten come back. Because if I try rolling this out now, it's, it's going to be like rolling rubber bands. So I'm just going to leave it. We'll come back in 10 or 15 minutes. All right. Here's where it gets a little bit messy. 
take our tea towel off and you can see how much our dough has risen. And now we're going to roll it out to approximately a 14 by 14 square, if I can get it that way. I can hear all the gases coming out of that. Okay. And if your dough starts sticking like that, put some more down. Because if you start rolling and you don't see the, the dough actually rolling, it's stuck. You need some, something to grab onto, like some more flour. So it's not 14 by 14 exactly, but it's pretty close. Now, I go and I get my butter that is nice and hard. Peel off the wax paper and put it down over half of the dough. Now, what you want to have is a rim around the edges. Now, I'm going to bring this over and close it up. Bring everything together. Now, give it a seal with your hand. Heal with your hand. Now, we're going to start rolling and turning. Rolling and turning. This is what's going to give the layers of flakiness. So, I put some more flour on the board. I said it was going to get messy. Bring it out to approximately a 16 by 20 or thereabouts. Now, if while you're rolling, if it's a warm day, and if your butter starts getting soft and oozing out the sides, wrap it up, put it in the refrigerator, wait a half an hour, and come back and do it some more. Okay. Pretty good. Fold it once. It's like folding a letter. Fold it over, press it, and roll again. That's our first roll. As I'm rolling, I can still hear the gas in the in the dough making noises. So I can see the butter starting to get soft. But I'm going to persist. And just add more flour. More flour up here. Give it another shot. Wrap it up, put it in the refrigerator for half an hour, bring it out because the butter is getting softer. But I will persist and just keep going because I have one more turn to do. See all that butter. This will be the last roll and turn. And then what we're going to do is we're going to refrigerate this. Now, remember I told you that there's a whole bunch of the different recipes for Danish pastry that I've seen. 99% of them say, after you've done this process, wrap it and put it in the refrigerator for a minimum of four hours, overnight being better. We're not going to do that. The reason we're not going to do that is because for whatever reason, this particular recipe of dough does very well with working with it 30 minutes after you've done this rolling and folding.
Okay. Now I'm a little bit messy. I'm just trying to square this up. Now, fold it. Brush off as much of the excess flour. Try to square it up as best you can. Seal it up. Now we're going to wrap it up. I have my dough. I'm going to put it on a sheet and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, I'm going to take it out and let the fun begin because that's when we're going to start making it into different pastries. So, 30 minutes. <laughs> 